What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Monet Araya, here with the Lift Your Voice, Be Heard podcast. Thank you for joining me today. I know I've been gone for a couple weeks now. There's been a lot of things that have been moving, transitioning, and shifting in our world, in our realities, in our communities and families. And so it is very important for us to take the time we need to reset, to refuel, to balance our energies and our emotions. You know, there's been um, a lot of anxiety and tension surrounding, sure, COVID-19 and being in quarantine, you know, and the world still um, trying to adjust to the havoc that COVID-19 has placed on our economy and our way of life and our way of being. And so on top of that, we also have um, a revolution happening against police brutality um, sparked not just by the murder of George Floyd, but that was the tipping point for a lot of Americans and a lot of people in the world to recognize and say, you know, enough is enough. How many times do we have to witness the murder of an unarmed black man, right? With no feelings, no remorse from white officers. We have to take this time to change the way that black people are perceived in this country, in America, as well as the world. And that starts with having open and honest conversations. We have to start there because for the longest that I can remember, you know, talking about race, talking about injustice is a very uncomfortable conversation to have with someone right? And so if we don't sit at the table to fix what is broken, then we will repeat history where people's lives will will remain broken and traumatized, marginalized and stigmatized. We cannot afford that as a humanity. We cannot afford to have that kind of thinking that you are superior based on the color of your skin. Right, We can no longer have in place laws that discriminate against people who are naturally born in this country. And not just that, but people as human beings, right? America has a lot of inhumane um, laws, a lot of discrimination or discriminatory laws as well. And systems in place that do not treat each person equally. Okay? Everything in America is built on a system to keep the oppressed oppressed. Keep the wealthy wealthy. And we can no longer have that as our reality. We have to start telling the truth about how this country was built and the laws and um, the systems that government has enacted to pervert the truth. You know, we have to start speaking up and educating ourselves on true history. The history books that they, or the history they teach you in school, and those history books are basically what they want you to believe. You know, I can remember a couple years ago where Texas, a lot of books uh, for the educational system is um, the, the company is out of Texas and they basically classify slavery as farmers, economic farmers, as if it was there was no brutality, as if Africans were not stolen from Africa, as if people were not whipped as if men, women, and children were not brutally raped. You understand? So we have to do our homework and dive into the truth of this country in America as well as the truth of the world. We can no longer trust that our government has our highest intentions because they don't. 
okay? America was never built to be equal for everyone. America was never built to treat um, indigenous people equally as white people. You can read it in the history books. You can look at the systems and how we uh, live our lives. Look at these corporations. Look at government. You know, they show you clear as day who this country was built for. But unfortunately, they don't tell you the truth because it was enslaved people who built America. When the 13th Amendment came out, it's not mis by a mistake that there's a clause in there about imprisoning people. When the South lost the Civil War, they had to come up with a means to produce income. Slavery or the Civil War was about economics. It was not about freeing slaves. Abraham Lincoln said it himself that if he could continue slavery, he would. But the whites in the northern states were suffering economically while the South was prospering, right? America owes its wealth of prosperity due to slavery. You have free labor with thousands, hundreds of thousands, of, if not millions of Africans and Black Americans who were, who were enslaved. So we have to go back and read our true history. Pick up a book, not a book that was given to you by a system that was so hell-bent on miseducating you. You have to be smarter than what you are taught. I have been saying that since I was 16. You have to be smarter than what you have been taught because what you have been taught is by design. You think about finances. They don't teach you in school how to be a productive citizen. They don't teach you how to manage your money, how to pay your bills. They don't teach you how to start a business and thrive. They teach you how to fall in line with the system to keep you as an employee and under their thumb, right? A lot of us will be so much further ahead if we knew the basis of economics, if we knew how credit worked, if we were properly educated, okay? So I just wanted to jump on here and basically say, you know, pick up a book, Watch a series, a docu-series um, about Hidden Colors is a great docu-series to watch about the history of America. Uh, I think it was volume one. Completely changed my life. The Statue of Liberty was not um, the, the current statue that we, we have come to know today. You know, where it's um, Lady Liberty for all humanity and, and for immigrants no it was an African it was a black it was an African woman with broken chains in her hands and around her feet that the French sent over because of the pivotal um, position that African slaves played in our freedom whether that's revolutionary war whether that's a civil war you know the Statue of Liberty today still has chains around her feet the original Statue of Liberty, the, the picture is in, is at the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> they have history and facts, plain as day. Posted plain as day for anyone who has an open mind to search for truth. Right there in your face. But you have to be open to it, right? So I encourage you today to pick up a book to learn the true history of this country um, a book that really changed my life uh, is, a called, is a book called The House That Race Built. And it goes back to how the government systematically and strategically removed the black man from the black family in the 1960s. Right around, um, I won't say Vietnam, but I believe so. But you think about that, like, 
why is it so important since the beginning of slavery to 1960 for the U.S. government to strategically dismantle the black man? Right? So we have to start thinking for ourselves. We have to start seeing people as people. Right? We have to start seeing that different does not mean bad. Different means advantage. When you have a cultural diverse, culturally diverse community, you are able to learn new perspectives, different perspectives, different experiences to sharpen your perspective of of life, what it means to coexist as one, one human race, no matter the different colors of our skins, our creeds, you know, but see a person for who they are, through their character, through their integrity, through their morals, through their values, right? So I just wanted to get on here and just say, you know, it's time for us to start educating ourselves on what is truth and sitting down and having those difficult conversations. I know for me, there's been a, a, a wide range of emotions, you know, from frustration to anger to hurt to tears to, you know, feeling numb, you know, and you know, this is not just for white people to educate themselves, it's for black people to educate themselves as well. You know, there's a lot of ignorance going on in the world today, especially in America. And we have to change that. We have to change the powers that be. We have to start with ourselves. Change starts with the person in the mirror, period. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look in the mirror and make the change. That's what Michael Jackson said with Man in the Mirror. Okay, so change starts with you. Progress starts with you. Enlightenment starts with you. Truth starts with you. Leadership starts with you. Okay, so let's take this time to really see with our own eyes. Don't judge and say, oh, well, if this person had complied then this wouldn't be the result. No, there it has been plenty documentation, plenty um, videos to show the dis- disparity between how blacks are treated, whether they have guns or not, and how whites are treated, whether they have guns or not. And I'm talking about AR-15. Okay, so do your homework. Research the truth for yourself because it's out there. Pick up a book and read. Another book to get is a a book called Black Like Me, where a white man in the 1970s, I believe, um, or 60s, dressed up. He was taking pills to darken his skin. So his skin appeared to be more melanated. Just so he can see and experience the firsthand experience of a black man in America. There's plenty of books out here to educate yourself, get involved with your community, with nonprofits, and let's continue to advocate for the voices that have gone unheard, the voices that have been suppressed, the truth um, that has been suppressed. And let's start healing the hearts, our hearts, um, so that we can move forward in a healthy manner that we can move forward where no one is reminded every day, no matter where they live in America, that they are black, right? Even with women in corporations, you know, women, I can speak personally, you know, having ran a banquet department and having to work with um, a black woman that was the cop and service manager. And one thing about it, we did not mesh and mostly because she was inexperienced in her job she had no experience actually and her position is so vital to the sanity and structure of my job how I relate or how I execute events for clients how I lead my team 
And so one thing about it, she said that I don't want us to be perceived as the angry black women just because we are butting heads. You understand? So you have to put yourself in uh, the shoes of, of other people. Sociology teaches us that all, all in itself, understanding behaviors, right? But you have to have a yearning to learn. You have to have a compassionate heart and you have to have an open mind to really uh, create change within yourself first, within your family, within your community, within how you lead and how you educate the next generation. Okay, so I just wanted to say that. And I hope you guys are being safe. COVID-19 is still out here claiming lives and people are still in the hospital. So be safe no matter what you do, no matter where you go, you know, and be kind. You know, everyone is going through um, a very uncomfortable process and transition right now. So be kind, be a little more patient, you know, and um, just lead with love. Lead with positivity and and good energy. So this is Monet Arias signing out for Lift Your Voice, Be Heard podcast. I hope you guys have a blessed and awesome day. I will be on here more frequently talking, having open dialogue, you know, going live if need be so that we can start having these conversations and we can start um, expressing our feelings, our thoughts and educating each other. You know, we are all one family, okay? So y'all have a blessed day. Y'all stay safe, and I will see you soon.